Hey guys, you're watching Chef Wild. Today we are going to cure our own corned beef roast using deer meat. So, we have a deer roast here. This is actually what I would normally use for jerky. And on a beef, they use brisket. But you can use whatever you want. Um, pretty much, you want to use a pretty good cut of meat. Something that you would normally use as a steak or like a rump roast. Um, this is jerky meat is the deer hindquarter, like what you would normally make steaks out of. I just use that because I got that laying around. And so we're going to get started here. So this is the first half. We're going to put this, make the brine, and it's going to sit in the fridge for about 10 days. So this is not something you want to make if you're starving. Mm. So you got to think this out. So a lot of times I like to take it and do it, like make the brine, put it in there on a Friday. Let it sit over a week and then cook it on a Sunday is good. This time I'm doing it on a Thursday. I'm going to let it sit so I can cook it Saturday night. About 10 days. Yeah. So, let's go ahead and get started. So you get a big pot and we're going to put a gallon of water in that big pot. Okay. There's our water. So we're going to get that on the burner. And we'll put that like medium heat. We'll get it heating up. So, I've looked around at a few recipes, kind of got an idea of what goes in them, and I wrote down, I've used, I've made some other recipes before, and some of them I thought were too salty, so I kind of got my own recipe here. We're going to give it a try. So, we got our water. We're going to use some kosher salt. We are going to do about, I'm going to go with about three quarters of a cup kosher salt in there. And so this is making a brine, basically, is that right? Yep, this is a brine, but this brine uses a couple kinds of salt. So there's your kosher salt. Um, now the brown sugar. We're going to do a half a cup of brown sugar. Kind of making a brine almost like you brine salmon or anything like that in. Yeah, the real difference between this and like a salmon brine is the fact that you add the pickling spice in there. And curing salt. And curing salt, right? Yes, we'll get to that. So there's a half a cup of brown sugar, uh, pickling spices. So what are you using? So this is just a McCormick pickling spice, okay, any brand you like. You can even make your own pickling spice, but I just buy this because it's easy. We're going to put, I'm going to put roughly... I don't know, eighth of a cup or so in there. That's a quarter cup, about half that. We'll put that in there. And then, our main ingredient is curing salt. So you gotta go and you gotta find, I use this tender quick. This is a meat cure. And the big difference, this has sodium nitrate in it. And that's what gives it the pinkish color like a corned beef has. So, and you got to be careful with this, don't use too much of it. So this is going to use a teaspoon. So I'm going to get my teaspoon in. Or four teaspoons, sorry. Four. There's one. Two. garlic in there and I'm gonna go with roughly a tablespoon a good like heaps good heaped tablespoon like that I'll throw that in there okay or you could use fresh garlic too you about four do. cloves or so yep you can mince your own garlic so now I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit and you're going to cook that until all the salt and sugar has dissolved. So you want to get your spoon and get that all stirred up. So what you're going to do is you're going to cook this until all that's dissolved and then you can let it cool to room temperature and then later we will show you how to put it into your meat. 
Alright guys, so we're back here. Let's give that a little stir. That is pretty well cool. It's down about room temperature. So, we are going to get the meat out here. So I got it. You want to put it in some sort of like a Tupperware and you're going to fill it like right to the brim. You don't want much air in there. So. How many pounds do you think this is here? That's probably a five or six pounds of deer meat. Okay. Again, hind quarter. A little three by four white tail I shot last fall. Maybe we'll throw some pictures of that up so you guys can see. Didn't get any footage on that one, but. So, so there it is. We got this, we're gonna stir it up. We might not fit all of this into this Tupperware. So we're just gonna pour that over it. That's probably about all I'm going to fit in there. So, some of our pickling spices kind of settle to the bottom, so if you want to add those in there with it, you can spoon them in there. Or if you have a Tupperware big enough, you should dump it all in there. But This is what we got, so we'll have to make that work. So there's that. So then you're going to take this and put the lid on it and you're going to put it in your fridge for again about 10 days and then we will be back and we're going to get this out and we're going to cook it in our Dutch oven so next weekend we'll be camping somewhere and we will show you guys how to make a barbecued corn deer sandwich out of this. And so yeah there's that and Chef Wild was busy tonight so we brined a roast made a three layer chocolate cake for my parents birthday made some sandwiches for dinner we're just chefing it up over here mm. so, well we will see you 10 days yep we'll see you at camp see you at camp Hey guys, we're back here. It's been about nine days since you saw me put that corn deer roast into its brine. We are, it's in the morning, we're getting a fire going. We're gonna let these coals kind of sit all day and then this evening we'll throw that thing in the, right in the Dutch oven. We'll have us a pretty good little picnic. We're just working on getting this fire going. Hi guys. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're here too with Outdoor Athlete, who is using his athlete skills to chop this firewood. I'll get it. Made it across the creek. Heck yeah. <laughs> I'm wet.
Okay, so we're to the corned beef. We are both putting all this in our Dutch oven liner. And we have some bacon. We, well, I guess we had to get something because this is really lean meat. And in a typical corned beef, you have a little bit of fat that kind of renders down when it cooks, so you get some juice. This will probably not create much of its own juice and we're not adding any water. So we added some pretty fatty looking bacon. I put a little layer on the bottom and then I'm just throwing the corned beef chunks right on top of that. And then I'm gonna put the rest of the bacon on here just so there's fat all the way around it. The boys have created well, I guess it's kind of half created right now, but our cooking station. That's right. Where it's going to sit. We'll tell more about that here in a few minutes. Okay, so that's all of our bacon. And then I have this little cup of similar ingredients that we put in the barbecue sauce. So there's about two tablespoons of brown sugar, a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, uh, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, some pepper, some garlic, and some Worcestershire sauce, like about a tablespoon. So this just goes right over all the top. This will kind of help with some of the juice too, and actually give the meat itself a little bit of a barbecue flavor, so you don't have to add as much barbecue sauce. That just goes everywhere. That's that, and then we're gonna put it in the Dutch oven and get it on the fire. You are? Yep. <clears throat> okay, so our Dutch oven, this just sits in there, and actually these liners don't go all the way to the bottom, so it kind of makes a little heat in the bottom when it's cooking, which kind of helps. And then the lid on there. That's that. snug, and that's that. Then over here, cut us a couple of green lodge pole. Kind of set across there so we can raise that Dutch oven up off the bottom. And then we still got our fire going on the side over here so we can keep pushing coals underneath it. So we get a nice slow cook on it. Yeah. So there it is on our little makeshift thing here. And like I was saying, this will probably take maybe two, three hours, just because this is probably cooking a little hotter than our crock pot. But at home on the crock pot, you can do this at home on the crock pot. And it will probably take anywhere from five to eight hours for a good fall apart roast. And depending on the size of your roast, we probably have about five to six pounds of meat here. So. Okay. All right, well, we're gonna let this sit for a little while and I'm just gonna keep checking on it and We'll be, we'll be back to check on this in a little bit, and then I'll show you guys what we're going to do for the sides here when I get stuff going. Alright, so, the boys went out for another little ride, and I am watching the fire currently over here with our little setup. I haven't checked on the meat yet, I'm going to give it a little bit more time, but in the meantime, I have been working on our sides. So if you guys tuned in to our episode on Veer Battered Pike, which is our only other episode right now, um, you saw us make Brussels sprouts and do them on the fire. And so that's actually one of the sides we're going to have today. Basically this was a semi fridge clean out. So we had some Brussels sprouts that we needed to use. So I got those in there with some butter. There's some butter on the bottom and then just kind of layered up the Brussels sprouts in there. And then salt and pepper that. And then I also did some potatoes. I probably got about eight potatoes or so in here. And just really thin sliced. My dad actually does this pretty often. Um, and I'm sure probably lots of you have tried this before, but if not, this is a really great way to do potatoes if you don't want to just do baked. So yeah, so I sliced the potatoes up, layered in some butter, layered in some onion, layered in some garlic, 
and then salt and peppered the entire thing. You could certainly use garlic powder, garlic salt, or any other seasoning that you want to try on there. Um, and then I'll just get those up on, or I guess finish wrapping them up in tin foil. And once I check the meat, I'll probably throw the potatoes on sooner just because they're obviously gonna take a little longer to cook than the Brussels sprouts. But I'll probably end up putting those ones on, they're actually a soft potato too. They're um, uh, red potatoes instead of like russet or baker potatoes. So they're a little bit softer. Um, so I'll probably get those on maybe a half an hour to an hour before the meat looks like it'll probably be done. And then the Brussels sprouts take about 20 minutes on the fire. So I'm gonna get these all wrapped up, ready to go. Uh, probably check on the roast here in maybe 20 more minutes just to see where we're at. And uh, we'll be ready for some barbecue sauce and some rolls. This is our sauce that we made a little bit ago. I ended up putting it into a tote we had and it's actually still kind of warm. But yeah, so that's where we're at. We'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so quick update before the boys get back. I had to take our Dutch oven and put it actually down in the flame because it didn't seem to be getting hot enough. It's probably been about an hour and a half-ish. And it's just like, there's just starting to get juice forming in the bottom. It's not really bubbling yet or anything. So I'm gonna try this for a little bit. I haven't thrown any of our sides on. Uh, hopefully we can get this warmed up a little faster and be eating soon. Okay, we got our corn deer roast. Pretty well done. We're gonna call her done. It's cooked. It's cooked. Our Brussels sprouts are done. Our potatoes are still in there, but they're done. Enough. <laughs> I'm gonna chop this up a little bit. Looks pretty tasty. How many hours? What is, what is it like? Eight o'clock? I have no idea. I think it's about eight o'clock right now. This took a few hours. That's seven. Seven. Okay, so it That's took about four, hours. four, yeah, roughly four hours. Well, it didn't last because it's been done for a while. Yeah. So there's the meat. I'm just gonna do some slices, put it on our buns. There's our buns. And then some barbecue sauce. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be tasty. Yeah. Okay, there's our potatoes. Beautiful brown and buttery and garlicky and our Brussels sprouts. Everything cool enough to pick up yeah, off of them? It was. And Brian is headed into the corned beef. Or corned deer, sorry, corned, corned deer. <laughs> Did you wash these times? Yep. They're starving. Ravenous. Been working hard dirt biking all day. Man. Okay, we'll be back in a second when everyone's eating. So that right there in that pot, that is a prime example of why we go hunting. Because food doesn't get any better than that. No matter where you go, restaurant, it just it does not get any better than that. Amen. <laughs> cooked on the fire. Agreed. Agreed 100%. Okay, so this is how much I've eaten already. Brussels sprouts are gone, potatoes are pretty much gone. Half of my sandwich is gone. The boys are on round two of sandwiches and sides. Guys? It is good. Corned it's beef like good. real good. Like, this corned deer, you couldn't even tell it was deer. Anyone that doesn't like deer meat wouldn't even know the difference. It's delicious. This barbecue sauce, awesome. Potatoes, awesome. Uh, Brussels sprouts, awesome everything here delicious it's the best roast i've ever eaten it cooked on a campfire all right so corned beef or geez corn deer corn deer we used a deer <laughs> we use a deer and yeah okay so 
I guess that's it for this round. Yep. We're gonna finish eating. Um, oh, we'll see you next time on Chef Wild with more delicious recipes and wild game food. Yep. Heck yeah. Today on Chef Wilder making some sandwiches and some of these onions are just pretty tough so I'm gonna go ahead and make short work of this one. So, we'll, uh, so what you want to do is you want to make sure your bar is long enough to get through the whole onion. I mean I think that's probably sufficient. So we will go ahead and we'll get started. Sean why don't you tell me what you're doing? <clears throat> we are surviving. We're building a bow drill so we can make a fire. It will be warm in it. We do not have any source of fire. We have no lighters. Do not. Call in some freaking birds too. My it. quads are burning! Go faster. <laughs> That's when you're in a one way. Come on, you fucker. Go, go, go! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Let's see what we got. Not a fucking thing down there. Look at a smoking stick, is all we got. <laughs> We're about through it! What the fuck? Why won't it go? <laughs> what are we doing wrong? Where's your bug spray? In the car. That stuff's flammable. I wonder if I can get it though. So we used the bow drill. We were just a sawing away, both of us on there. And we got a nice ember. It landed right in the tinder. I picked it up and, went, and it just burst into flames. And then we threw it in the fire pit, piled a bunch of wood on it, and look what we have there. It'll be warm tonight. And that's a s'mores fire right there. Yeah. You can have s'mores now. <laughs>